Melissa, have you finished your health check yet? Are there any results? I've been anxiously worrying about you all day, unable to concentrate on work. I've checked everything. I have the results, but I don't really want to discuss it right now. I need some time to compose myself. Why are you shutting me out? Are the results not good? Just tell me, and we'll face it together. Well, I... I have breast cancer. And they said it's an advanced stage, spreading rapidly. The doctor insisted on immediate hospitalization, because it's becoming dangerously life-threatening. Oh my god. How advanced is it? How far has it spread? Can we treat it right away? Will you be okay if you undergo surgery now? Joseph, I'm in complete disarray. The doctor mentioned further tests are necessary to determine my survival rate. If you want to leave now, then go ahead. I'll sign the divorce papers. If you keep hesitating, I fear I won't find the strength to leave you later. What are you saying? Why would I abandon you? Don't tell me it's too late to save you. No, there's still a chance for me. But the treatment could be prolonged and incredibly exhausting possibly lasting several years with substantial financial costs. I'm just afraid you won't be able to handle the immense pressure and the troubles that may come along. No, sweetheart. Don't think so poorly of me. Haven't the past two years of love and one year of marriage shown you my commitment? I accept it all, and I'll stand by your side no matter what happens. So let's face this together, openly. Joseph, thank you. Well, here it is. It appears the cancer is even more advanced than I thought. Preserving breast tissue might be challenging. The doctor mentioned a mastectomy, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy as necessary for my survival, which means I won't be the same as before. Honey, I'm not an expert, so I'll scour the internet for more information. Maybe the way I phrase it isn't accurate, but does that mean they'll remove your breast tissue? Yes, exactly as you said. Well, if I'm fortunate, they won't have to remove all of it, just a portion. I can't even begin to imagine it. What's going to happen? Will your breasts just... change? It's hard to say for sure, but it's likely that their shape will be affected. They might become asymmetrical or even lose their natural appearance. I'm sorry if it turns out that way. No, I should be the one apologizing. It's my negligence that has led to this critical situation. I should have taken you to the doctor when you first mentioned breast discomfort two months ago, but I've been too consumed by work to be there for you. It's all my fault, Melissa. I'm deeply sorry for failing you. No, please don't blame yourself. This isn't your fault. Are you concerned about how this change will affect your attraction to me? I understand if you find it difficult to accept. Don't say that. I didn't marry you for your physical appearance, Melissa. I don't care how your breasts look. My love for you is far deeper than that. But there's something else, Joseph. The doctor advised against getting pregnant during the treatment because it could harm the baby due to the medications involved. This means our dreams of having a child might have to be postponed indefinitely. Can you handle that? If you feel it's too much to bear, I'm willing to leave so you can find a partner who can give you everything. If I wanted someone perfect, I wouldn't have chosen you. You're the most important person in my life. And I don't care if we can have biological children or not. All that matters to me is that we face this together as a team. If we can't have our own children, we can explore other options like adoption. Our love can still create a beautiful family. Joseph, your unwavering love gives me strength. Thank you for being by my side. Now I can face the upcoming surgery with newfound courage. And knowing you're not alone makes me feel stronger too. I thank God every day for bringing you into my life. I'm grateful to have you as my husband, Joseph. I love you more than words can express, my dear. Now, take some rest and get ready for our date tonight. I'll take you to our favorite restaurant, where we can cherish each moment together. Yes, Joseph. I look forward to it. Hey, Melissa. I heard from Joseph. He just stopped by my house and told me about your condition. Since he has to go on a business trip for a few days, he asked me to take care of you. Do you really have breast cancer? Why didn't you tell me anything? Oh, hi, Mom. Lately, I've been feeling tired and busy with all the medical appointments and preparations for my surgery, so I haven't had a chance to inform anyone. Besides, it's not something I want to share as good news. You don't sound like yourself. I can sense your nervousness, sadness and sensitivity, 
Does this mean your condition is severe? Well, if we want to be optimistic, I can say it's not too bad, but it's also not great. Surgery always carries risks, and the thought of scalpels in my breasts naturally makes me nervous. They're an important part of my identity as a woman. Really? <laughs> Sometimes I forget that you're a woman too. You don't behave like a lady. Or a good daughter-in-law. Especially when you make my son do household chores that should be your responsibility. Um, mom, what are you talking about? Which chores are specifically assigned to me? In our household, we share the housework equally. Oh, really? But every time I visit your house, I always see my son doing all the household chores. Whenever I come over, it's Joseph who's cooking while you're sitting and relaxing. Or he's folding clothes while you're fast asleep on the bed. You don't fulfill your duties as a wife or a woman in this family. I think if you have surgery to remove your breast, you might as well become a real man. <laughs> Mom, did you forget that you said you didn't want to eat my cooking anymore? That day I came home from work and rushed to the kitchen to cook dinner. But after you tasted one spoonful, you said the soup was too bland and looked like vomit. To please you, I added salt. But then you said it was as salty as seawater and I ruined the soup. Since then, I have stopped cooking for you. As I said before, both Joseph and I work and we agreed to divide the household chores. Usually, I handle laundry and Joseph takes care of ironing and folding. Sometimes appearances can be deceiving. Those tasks are typically meant for women, but I can't force my husband to do them. My son is exhausted from work. And you still make him do more? Mom, it's because you constantly scrutinize and criticize everything that he and I had to move out and live separately. I'm exhausted and I don't want to continue arguing with you. If you don't have anything else to say, I'll talk to you later. Oh, don't be mad at me. It was just a joke. You shouldn't take it so seriously. But I am genuinely worried about you. Are you referring to the surgery? The doctor has assessed my condition and the success rate is quite high, so there won't be any major risks to my health. I'll be fine. However, after the surgery, I'll still need to take antibiotics and have regular injections just to minimize the risk of cancer reoccurring. No, it's not about the surgery. I'm worried about your marriage with my son. You don't have to worry about us, Natalie. Our relationship is still strong, and Joseph loves me unconditionally. There's no reason for your concern. That's what I've always feared, my foolish child. Always thinking of others before himself. Shouldn't he be looking for someone else? Someone without all these complications? Mom, I don't appreciate any of these jokes at all. Joseph has made it clear that my appearance or any physical changes won't affect his love for me. Oh, come on. You know Joseph is just being kind. What about when reality hits? After the surgery with your changed appearance, it won't be as appealing even though I never found you attractive to begin with. And Joseph, attending corporate parties, needing a beautiful companion, will he still be satisfied with you then? I can dress in a way that hides any changes, and I can wear supportive undergarments. It's not something that will be obvious to others. Only you and Joseph know about it. Aren't you afraid he'll get tired of you and eventually seek someone else? You'll end up even more miserable and desperate when that happens. Maybe you should consider divorcing Joseph preemptively. I offered to divorce Joseph when I first found out about my diagnosis, but he assured me he would stand by me no matter what. It's not my decision to make alone. Besides, beauty is subjective, and Joseph sees beyond physical appearances. You're always so argumentative, Melissa. That's why I say you lack femininity. And what about children? After the surgery, you won't be able to have children anymore. Joseph has always wanted a child. Do you have the heart to make him so sad? The inability to conceive is temporary during the treatment. We have discussed it and Joseph is willing to wait. We have even considered adoption as an option to fulfill our desire for a family. No! I absolutely disagree with that. Adoption? I never approved of such a thing. The primary duty of a woman is to give birth. And if you can't fulfill that, you don't deserve to be my daughter-in-law. And how many more years will you make me wait for a grandchild? I'm over 60. I don't want to wait any longer. This is not something you can dictate, Natalie. Your reasons for happiness are ridiculous. What is it you really want to say? You are an insufferable daughter-in-law. Don't you understand that you should respect your mother-in-law? Fine. Let's be direct then. I want you to divorce Joseph. I can't accept having a messy, sick, and weird daughter-in-law like you. 
I believe you're incapable of giving birth to a child for Joseph. And even if you did, I question the child's health. What if they also face the same challenges? Or if they are teased for not having a normal mother? It's selfish of you to only think of yourself. Um, you do realize that breast cancer isn't contagious, right? Besides, I don't want to divorce Joseph. I love him very much. And it seems like Joseph disagrees with your idea as well, doesn't he? If Joseph had agreed, you wouldn't have gone to such great lengths to convince me of anything. I have already introduced Joseph to a friend's daughter. I really like that girl and want her to be my daughter-in-law. But I don't understand what it is about you that Joseph loves so much. So if you want a divorce, go ahead. I won't give you a hard time. No, absolutely not. I think that settles it, doesn't it? Now, I have to go for my hospital visit, so I won't be able to argue with you any longer. Besides, maybe I don't need your care as Joseph asked. I believe I'll be better off without your help. Goodbye. You're so stubborn. We'll see about that. But mark my words, Melissa. One day, Joseph will come to his senses and realize that he deserves better than you. Melissa, I've thought long and hard about this, and I can't continue pretending that everything is fine. The very idea of you going through breast surgery disgusts me to the core. I've tried to sympathize with your situation, but I've found comfort in the arms of another woman. She possesses a beauty and allure that surpasses anything you could ever offer. She is fertile and capable of fulfilling my desire for children. I can no longer bear the weight of your burdens. Divorce is the only path for us now, and I insist that you disappear from my life, taking your illness with you. I am devoid of any care or compassion, and I won't spend a single penny on your behalf. Don't text me back. I don't want to talk with you anymore. Leave my house before I return, for you have never been deserving of my love. Melissa, I've returned from my business trip, and I'm about to step into a taxi to head home. Shall we go out to eat together tonight before your hospital visit tomorrow? I miss you so much. How dare you speak to me as if nothing happened? You think a simple date can erase the hurtful and cruel words you uttered? Do you have any idea how utterly devastated and crushed I felt after reading those messages? Don't worry. I've already packed my things and won't take any of your possessions with me. I'm so sorry, Melissa. You must have been very angry with me because I didn't text you these days, right? But you said I said hurtful or heartless words? I'm a bit confused. What? Don't pretend to know anything. Scroll up and reread those horrible texts you sent me this morning. Do you know how desperate and sad I was after I read those lines? Wait a moment. I genuinely don't understand what you're accusing me of. I haven't sent you any texts in the past few days. I didn't even have my phone with me. Don't play innocent with me. The messages I received came from your number. Are you suggesting someone else use your phone to send those heartless messages? I'm telling you the truth, Melissa. I haven't touched my phone until just now. I had to visit my mother's house briefly before heading to the airport, and I accidentally left my phone there. That's why I couldn't contact you. I only just retrieved it a short while ago. So you expect me to believe that you didn't send those vile messages? Yes, Melissa. I swear on everything that I hold dear. You are my world, and I would never stoop so low as to hurt you in any way, even intentionally. How can I be certain that you're telling the truth? Can I truly trust you after this betrayal? I understand your skepticism, but I assure you I'm being honest. In fact, I had a crucial meeting with a client this morning. If you need proof, you can verify it with my colleague. I even rushed through my work to be home with you earlier. I haven't had a moment's rest since. All right, Joseph. I believe you. I'm sorry for jumping to conclusions earlier. No, I understand why you thought that way. It's understandable since it came from my phone number. But who would do such a thing to make you misunderstand me? Is it possible that someone hacked into my phone just to play this cruel joke on you, knowing about your battle with breast cancer? Hold on a moment. I think I may have an idea who could be behind this. When I initially read the messages, I was overwhelmed with sadness and disappointment, and I didn't take the time to analyze the situation carefully. However, upon rereading them, I noticed some suspicious clues. What? Do you have a suspect in mind? Please tell me. 
It's all speculative at this point, and nothing is certain. But maybe the truth won't be easy for you. I don't get it. What do you mean? We'll discuss this in more detail once you're home. Mom, let's have a talk. Well, well, look who's here. How are you holding up? Did the surgery make you even more pathetic? I bet Joseph can't stand the sight of you anymore. It's only a matter of time before he divorces you. No, that's not happening. So spare your concern. Instead of focusing on me, maybe you should take a good hard look at yourself. What are you implying? What's your problem? Oh, don't act innocent. You're the one behind those vile messages from Joseph's phone, aren't you? Oh, those messages. <laughs> the ones telling you the harsh truth that you'll be nothing but a burden to Joseph after the surgery? Well, whoever sent them, I can't say they're entirely wrong. You've become a liability, and you're deluding yourself if you think otherwise. Joseph has been sacrificing his time and energy, taking care of you day and night at the hospital. Have you ever stopped to think about that? But why should I take the blame for those messages? I understand what you're trying to say, and I'm grateful for everything Joseph has done for me. It's rare to find someone who actually upholds their wedding vows. But let's get back to the point. Did you know that there are advanced software and applications that protect phone data from unauthorized access? What does that have to do with anything? Why are we talking about this now? It has everything to do with this. Joseph left his phone at your house, didn't he? Because of the confidential company information on his phone and the previous security breach, he installed a special security application linked to my phone. So what? I still fail to see your point. Well, this application utilizes facial recognition every time the phone is unlocked. And guess what? The person who sent those messages entered the wrong password repeatedly until they finally entered my wedding date correctly. As a result, the application captured a photo of that person. And you know what's even more interesting? It looks a lot like you, Mom. That means nothing. It's not proof that I sent those messages. I was simply looking for something on Joseph's phone. What's your problem with that? You're right. It's not proof if you were innocent. But here's the kicker. The timing of those messages coincides with the time you were trying to access my husband's phone, Natalie. And there's another thing you probably didn't notice because it's become a habit of yours. Using the sign to end a sentence. While Joseph never does. You call that evidence? It's utterly ridiculous. Yes, it may not be definitive proof of your guilt, but it's substantial enough for me to take legal action against you for impersonation and the defamation of my career. I've already reported the incident to the police. If you're innocent, there's no need to be afraid. If the real culprit is you, I will offer you a sincere apology. What? Why would you involve the police in such a trivial matter? You're blowing this way out of proportion. It may seem trivial to you, but it's a serious violation of my privacy and emotional well-being. I won't allow someone to harass me and spread malicious lies without consequences. This isn't just about the messages. It's about the betrayal and the intent behind them. I won't tolerate such behavior from anyone. Not even family. I can't believe you would go to such lengths over a misunderstanding. You're being unreasonable and exaggerating the situation. We're a family, Melissa. We should be able to resolve our issues without involving the police. Are you suggesting we handle this matter within the family? Do you admit that the culprit is someone within our own home? Is it Jason? Should I confront my father-in-law about this when he visits me at the hospital? What? Is Jason there? No, you can't tell him. I'm sorry, but it's too late for that. I've already exposed your actions. I told them everything. And you know what? Jason is disgusted by your cruelty and heartlessness. He wants a divorce, Natalie. He no longer wants anything to do with you. And Joseph decided to cut ties with you too. We're no longer a family. Melissa, please, I beg you to help me. I can't bear the thought of losing Joseph and Jason. They're my world, my everything. I'll do whatever it takes to make things right. I'll grovel, I'll beg, I'll do whatever they want. Just please convince them to forgive me. I can't live without them. Natalie, your actions have caused immense pain and shattered the trust that Joseph and Jason had in you. Rebuilding that trust will not be easy, if it is even possible. You must understand the gravity of what you've done. It'll take more than empty promises and desperate pleas to mend the bonds that have been broken. I will do whatever it takes, Melissa. I'll prove to them that I've changed. 
that I'm no longer the person who inflicted such pain upon you. Please, I'm begging you, give me this opportunity to make things right. I can't bear the thought of losing my family forever. It's ironic, isn't it? You don't want to lose your own family, yet you are willing to destroy mine. Begging me in vain won't change the fact that you have to face the consequences of your actions. So instead of staying there, begging for forgiveness, I suggest you prepare yourself for the legal proceedings ahead. You'll have to answer for both insulting me and seeking a divorce from Jason. My determination to seek justice prevailed as the legal proceedings unfolded. The court recognized the gravity of Natalie's actions and the immense damage she had caused. Natalie was ordered to pay substantial compensation for her deceitful behavior, a financial burden that would weigh heavily on her for years to come. Furthermore, the truth about Natalie's manipulation and cruelty came to light, leading to a devastating consequence for her marriage. Jason, deeply hurt by her actions and unable to reconcile with the betrayal, made the difficult decision to end their relationship. Natalie found herself facing not only financial ruin, but also the loss of her family. Joseph, too, could no longer bear the weight of Natalie's deception and the pain she had inflicted upon me. He chose to sever all ties with Natalie, recognizing that her actions were irredeemable and incompatible with a healthy, loving relationship. On the other hand, my resilience and unwavering spirit allowed me to overcome the challenges I faced. As a cancer survivor, I found solace in the love and support of Joseph who stood by my side throughout the tumultuous ordeal. Together, we created a new chapter in our lives, filled with happiness, growth, and a profound appreciation for the bond we share. My strength and triumph over adversity inspired others facing similar struggles, and I became an advocate for cancer survivors, offering comfort and guidance to those in need. My journey of healing and personal growth served as a beacon of hope for those who face their own battles.